Hello everyone, thanks to the power of the internet, I got to talk with you. It is me, Immortal Blank, aka Mr. Sokaya, so who better to tell you what is Levy Address with its reveals. I'm going to go into the support before I talk about how I really personally feel about this. So of course the grade zero does what you think when you write upon draw a card. However, this art goes <laughs> way too hard. I would have loved this beetle dragon thing to have been like a grade two, a grade three support. But like, hey, this has already sold me. The grade one uh, just makes your ride free. That's it. I'm kind of disappointed a little bit. Could have been a little bit better, done a little bit more. But I get that we're part of Stokea and they don't really like giving us generics for it. Because you got to specifically have that in soul for it to be free. The Grade 2, same artist of uh, Inlet, by the way, might look familiar because it's the same pose. But when it's rode upon, so you got to be playing the Grade 3, you can Energy Blast 3, look at the top 5, and choose basically anything except a Grade 4 and add it to hand. This is, this is really cool. This is really based... You're always going to play this. <clears throat> but what does the grade 3 do? Obviously something cool. Well, Levy Address, the Destined One itself, does Counter Blast 1. You choose one of your rear guards and your opponents and put one Infinity Eyes marker on them. What do they do? Well, it's not actually written on the marker. It's written on the Vanguard. When either player uh, unit on rear guard with an Infinity Eyes marker attacks or boosts, you can have it get either plus 10k or minus 10k until end of that battle. Obviously, the minus 10k is to your opponent. And you can remove that marker from regard to draw one card. The Divine skill is if your opponent is grade 3 or greater, you Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponents and your own rare guards and put an Infinity Eyes marker on them. And it gets 10k in a crit. Now, this is good. This is okay. I play tested a little bit. Fine, it's whatever. I have a lot of re reservations about this. Because Stokea is going to get shafted. Because if you look at all the divine skills from set one, Zorga's isn't the best. It's just restand up column. A lot of normal support of everywhere else does that. For Levy Address, it's divine skill. This opponent's vanguard grade three yeah this opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater should never have existed on this vanguard it should have been exactly like welstra where you just launch this off at the top because a lot of your support requires you to have three or more markers or a marker in the same column and whatnot this should never have been a thing there's a lot of things i'm going to pick on keter for a little bit there's Youthberg, who can go into its different forms and basically get this ability of 10k and a crit on one of the bad forms that people only play one of to throw in soul. So yeah, this divine skill should have been able to be used when your opponent's grade 2 or more. And also, this remove one of your infinity eyes, draw one is good. I like this. That should have been a skill. However, the marker effect of 10k or minus 10k shouldn't have been on the vanguard at all. It should have just been on the marker and it should have been the marker's effect because that's exactly what Excel is. And this is basically what that's copying because, you know, this, this is a dragon tree marker, but better. So, yeah, that, that, that is my gripe so far with Levy Address. Outside of the fact, I'm going to go into more of the support before I complain about this, but it's just Magnolia, but better. And as a Magnolia supporter, it, it hurts. It really hurts. But yeah, we have Claude Hunter Julia, who, when this unit is placed on rear, gun infinity eyes, marker in the same column, counter blast one, choose a great throw uh, lower from your drop, call it a rear. You got three or more markers on your field. Don't forget, if your opponent has it, it doesn't count. It gets plus 10k, so it's a 20k attacker. Not too bad. It's basically counter blast res anything. 
the one thing is, if this is a lot of bug dragons, wh why, why is she a fox something? I get it's Stokea, but why? All right, this thing, really cool. We got Clarence at the end of the battle where this unit attacked or boosted. If you got an Infinity Eyes mark on the same column, if you haven't countered charged, which you really shouldn't, because there's only one other good card for that, you put this in Soul and counter charge one. I already knew that this would be Levy Address kind of specific. Uh, kind of is and isn't because it doesn't specifically say it, but you need the marker. Uh, considering most of Stokea's counter chargers is four attack or more. Or, hey, on a boost of your third attack, retire this counter charge one. Don't get a lot of options, but I'm so glad we see this because the deck is really counter blast heavy. Now this order. I go back and forth because I don't really like this order. But it's decent late game, but this deck is early aggro. What it is is play this card with Energy Blast 2. If you got Levy Address, you call basically a grade 3 or lower from your drop. Call it a rear. Gets 5k for each Infinity Eyes in the same column. So it's at most a plus 15k. If your opponent doesn't call to a column that has a marker possibly 20 i've never seen it happen and this thing foxel oh i wish this was more generic because it is a 15k booster if it's levy address but also if you have an infinity eyes marker on your opponent's rear guard uh it gets 2k and then you can counter blast one choose one of your rear guards from back row and it gets plus 10k and can attack from back row. This is why this is kind of Magnolia, but better. Because it gets that fourth attack. You can just shotgun this on your first grade 3 turn if you see this. And have a lot of fun. So a lot of civilian horn support now becomes active in this deck. Uh, really, Gabreg and Alvin are the only real targets for this. And don't forget, it doesn't have to be on the marker itself. You just get a little bit more power. And then finally, this grade 2 is really cool. Because it's basically Keter's dog, but tied to a grade 2 and Levia address. Uh, when it's placed on rear, you got Infinity Eyes marker, Energy Blast 3, look at top 2, choose 1, add it to your hand, put the rest on top or bottom. And then you get 5k. So it's a 15k attacker. But also, if you're a Vanguard's grade 3... If you have three or more markers, it gets another plus five, so it's 20 now. And if you don't have any other rear guards with this in it, the back row, so you can still have one in the front rear, it can attack from back row. So it's a 20k attacker, 30 if it's on a marker, and can attack from back row. So you can get four attacks that way, or five if you change it, uh, chain it with Voxel to get your other back row to attack. Like I said, this is Magnolia, but better. Because while Magnolia only gives plus 5 in Elder to everything, that's not a lot. This It kind of combines the best part of Magnolia Mask and Magnolia Elder, which is why I'm most likely going to end up playing this deck more when it comes out. Also, SCC, very beautiful. Oh, chef's guess. But yeah. My big gripes is what I just kind of dumped on in the beginning of the Grade 3. It's a good card. It's solid. The Rye line is okay. I'm most likely going to change the Grade 1 out with Rancor Chain. Or uh, Rowas, as most Stokea cards. Because I don't really care about the discard. Or really care about its Grade 3 order. There's a lot more I'm playing with deck list in the future but yeah uh i'm going to upload this video before the new episode where i'm guaranteeing this 10k in a crit and infinity eyes marker on your rear guard it's going to be one of the weakest one available yes this is good but it's not the best there there was a lot more options like this thing is tied to a grade 3 or greater, then I would be... I would have this not target the rear guards, but target the vanguard circle. Put a marker on those, because now you 
permanently, because of the marker, get a plus 10 to your vanguard. But also, your opponent, for one vanguard swing, dear god, gets minus 10. Because when you do that, you now have to get rid of it to draw a card. Uh, at least that's how I'm reading it, because it's not a cost to do it. It is mandatory to remove it if they attack on and give the minus 10. Because they can attack and you don't have to minus 10 them. It's optional. But yeah. That's what I currently feel about the deck. It's okay. I wish it was better. There was a lot of ways it could be better. But I, I have to see more. It's a good starting point, but it definitely needs more support. But until then, it's going to take Sylvian Orn Beast. Uh, if you give me a second. Uh, this is kind of the deck list I'm using. Obviously, we're being supportive. Uh, proxying. This is what it's supposed to be because you get to look at the top deck. You can call something normal, like a grade 2 or greater, or a normal order back. This is a, our second ever promo in Stokea. Most of you will probably have never seen this in your life. But it can only attack on the fourth battle of the turn. And the reason why it's 5k is because if you look real closely, its base critical is 2. So it's basically a roaming prison that can intercept. And if you have it on a uh, marker, it's a 15k. If you have it in the back row on a marker, it's 25k. Pretty good. Uh, the only downside is unlike Roaming Prison, it doesn't come back with every order. I'm not running Gabreg because that requires you to attack from back row or front row and it's in the back row. So you can't really use it your first turn. You can, but it's... I'm debating because it's all about what your opponent has and most likely they're not going to have a 1 or a 0 the things you want to stop sentinels or triggers and very early on if you're using it you're kind of wasting its potential because they're just going to I'm at 2 damage I'm going to take it which is why I'm running Alvin because Alvin is always kind of useful it's always a booster and it's 2 or more so even if you swing 18 with it that's still two cards they got to guard with it. So they can do, hey, two 5Ks from hand. Well, that's that that's it. But if they only have triggers, that needs two triggers. And that feels incredibly bad to guard. And this is, this is some secret tech. Don't tell anyone. I'm still trying to work it out. Because the counter charger goes in soul, so it works out. But here's uh, Trigmagal Assault. Soul Blast 2, at the end of the turn, this card boosted, you stand it. The reason I'm doing this is because if you have it on a marker, I'm pretty sure it still gets the plus 10. So it's a 17k booster. Uh, if you attack with your Vanguard first to make this thing attack from back row, it's actually a 27k booster. And then Soul Blast 2, you stand it. So you're getting really... Two very offensive attacks, because 27k boost, and then 27k attack. And if you get a trigger, because this thing's boosting, you give it the power. That's it's so good. And the other order I'm playing around with is Ghost Bilk, because you get a unit back from drop. Even though it's to the top of the deck, this goes in soul. Once again, I'm playing around with decks, this is the idea. Please, tell me. What do you think of this? Because obviously, I just think it's okay. You might think it's great. Show me the deck list you're building for this. Let's talk. Let's build. Let's let's make Stokea stronger than what people just think of Zorga and Leonorn.